blessings, 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 and good evening. Welcome to Wednesday Watch. My name is Elder Andrea, and I'm the servant leader of Global Girl Ministries. And this is our evening prayer on Wednesday evenings. This is our inaugural uh, Wednesday Watch streaming. We've been doing our Wednesday Watch for our purpose school class students for the last year or so. And we decided, the Lord decided that we would uh, be doing these live to God be the glory. And uh, I wanna thank God for each and every one of you joining us on tonight. Um, I wanna thank my sister, Jackie Gavins, uh, for joining us as well on this evening. Um, from time to time, other members of Global Girl Ministries and our sister ministries will be joining us for Wednesday Watch on the wall as well. So welcome, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad to have you this evening. Um, so this is what we're going to do for Wednesday Watch. Um, normally what we do Wednesday Watch is we come in and um, we get prayer requests and then we pray about the prayer requests. And um, blessings, Lady Jeanette, good to see you. Thank you for joining us this evening. But the Lord gave me a little something different. Um, so the format for Wednesday Watch is real life real prayers okay real life real prayers and um when we're at church we tend to pray about churchy things does that make sense jackie yeah um, yes. you know you know we pray for the pastor we pray for the ministry and we pray for, you know we t touch on surface things but the lord said i want you to touch on some deep things some things that people might not necessarily want to talk about in church but they have a real need for prayer so what he had me to do was to take some prayer requests that I've gotten in the last week or so. And these are real prayer requests, um, some that people ask me and then some where I saw the need for the prayer request. Right? And he told me to put them in a hat. So I pulled out my trusty, dusty hard hat because it's time to get to work, y'all. It's time to get to work. And I'm going to put these in the the hat. Hat. And I'm going to toss the toss them around and then I'll just pick from the hat and we will uh, discuss that prayer request. And then, um, you know, uh, Jackie, as we go forward, um, I don't know if you will take the time to look up scriptures, but I might take the time to look up scriptures and then we'll pray about it. But I want us to talk about the prayer requests, not just kind of gloss over them because some of them are kind of deep and some of the things that, you know, whatever our discussion, however, the Holy Spirit leads us to talk about it because we have it here at Global Girl, we have these type of discussions all the time, but nobody's there watching us, if you will. So I want those type of conversations to be had along with the prayer requests okay so without further ado i'm gonna right, pick one and so um let's see uh okay so this first one says i'm unemployed and i don't qualify for benefits i'm unemployed and i don't qualify for benefits Woo. And I can so relate to this one. Um, what do you do? How do you survive when you've worked, but you haven't worked enough in order to qualify for un unemployment? Or um, you you work and but you work sporadically. How do you how do you survive? What do you do? How do you how do you function? How do you live? And for me personally, it has been by the grace of God. It has literally been trusting and believing and waiting on him to move on my behalf. 
Any comments, question, uh, any comments, Jackie? <clears throat> well, um, I guess with the unemployment, you know, do we pray? Well, you know, pray, I guess, for uh, the right opportunity job wise, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, you know, come available for that individual. <clears throat> you know, as they are putting out, you know, hopefully they're putting out application or resumes that their name will be called, that they will be selected. Yeah. Uh, you know, favor would rest upon them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pray for that. Um, let's pray for a favor for for them in, in a job. And if they're a person, you know, I know people that can't work mm -hmm. because of disabilities and their disability through social security hasn't come through they keep getting denied and they can't afford to get a lawyer and that kind of thing so um let's just pray about that for a few minutes so father god we love you we thank you we bless you we honor you and we praise you we thank you for the opportunity to come before your throne of grace yes, to obtain mercy in the time of trouble lord we thank you that your throne is open 24 7 365 father we don't have to make an appointment but we can come to you with all of our troubles with all of our cares and with all of our concerns lord we bless you because you are the father of lights and all good things come from you lord and so we thank you lord for all of your provisions we ask right now in the name of Jesus on behalf of this person, Lord, that you will bless them coming in and that you will bless them going out, Father, that you will show them favor according to your riches and glory, God. You said to give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give unto our bosom, Lord. So I'm asking that you bestow upon them a spirit of giving, God, that they receive a spirit of giving, that even in this season, Father, of lack, that they will receive that spirit of giving and they will give their way out. Thank you for the wisdom, God, that they will give their way out of this situation, Lord. I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you will provide all of their needs, Father that you will show them favor, Lord, that you will show them your grace, that you will show them, oh God, that um, they, that, that, there that your righteous sons have never had to beg bread thank you holy spirit that your righteous sons have never had to beg bread that if you will take care of the birds of the air that you will take care of us lord so i thank you lord for favor and I ask right now in the name of Jesus that as they fill out applications, if they are able, Lord, that you will breathe on them, that you will make their name ring in the ears of employers in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead, Jan Jackie, if you have anything. No, I don't have anything. Okay. All right. All right. If you, I know you get, when the Lord give you a word, you're going to release it. I know you are. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. <laughs> All right. The next one I just pulled out. The next one. Uh, this one is kind of deep. I keep dream. This one says, I keep dreaming about snakes and rats. I keep dreaming about snakes and rats. Whew. So I can say this. I know it's a lot of demonic activity right now. There's so much going on in the world. And I would really have to. I know snakes have something to do with the demonic. I don't know what rats mean. I don't know specifically what 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 snakes mean. And I don't know specifically what rats mean. But I do know that both of them are related to the demonic. Um, and a person under demonic attack, you know, um, I'm actually going to use my tool. Um, 
me give you some scriptures. Um, Thank you, Holy Ghost. So here's a scripture. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. That's Colossians 2 and 15. Um, Satan is a defeated foe. He is a defeated foe. He is already defeated. And... Um, in my experience, when you start dreaming about things like that and you feel like a, you're under attack, it's because you're a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Satan doesn't generally mess with folks who are on the fast track to hell, if you will. <laughs> so when you start dreaming about things like that, it's, a, it's, an, it's an attack on you because you're doing something that he is afraid of. So you got to stand up. You have to realize that you are victorious through Christ Jesus and that you um, cannot give in to the fear for the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love and a sound mind. Amen. So um, if you're dreaming about those things uh, as we're seeking the Lord in prayer, I ask that you seek the Lord as for yourself as well, that um, you ask the Lord to teach you how to war in the spirit. Um, just a little bit of my testimony. Um, when I first turned away from Satan and turned away from the kingdom of darkness and turned towards the Lord, I was being attacked constantly. Um, spiritually and even physically i would wake up with scratches on my arms and things like that um i could see demons and smell them and it was it, it was something else until i learned even in my dreams even in my sleep to um call upon the name of the lord so when you start seeing these things and dreaming about these things you almost have to train yourself subconsciously to call on the name of Jesus. So I encourage you to begin to meditate on the word of God, to meditate on the name of the Lord, and to learn how to trust in his name. Um, his name is the name at which every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, everything that is on the earth, above the earth, underneath the earth, anything created now or created later has to submit to the name of Jesus Christ. So uh, when you call on his name, those things I have found in my experience, those things have to flee. You have anything to add, Jackie? <clears throat> the only thing I, I, I thought about was the scripture <clears throat> coming from Luke 10 and 19. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it talks about the power uh, that God has given us. And, uh, you know, especially when you're dreaming about you know, demonic activities. You have to, you know, we need to know that we have power uh, and God has given us authority. <clears throat> and uh, Luke 10, 19 says, behold, I've given you power to tread over scorpions, serpents and scorpions <clears throat> and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And, yeah. you know, that's something, you know, we uh, should take with us, especially when, you know, uh, we're dealing with the enemy and the, the different attacks and the different things he tries to throw at, at us that, you know, we can walk in the power and the authority that God has given us and, you know, for, you know, to lead a victorious, I would say, life. So, so yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. Amen. We must be victorious. We must be victorious. And we have to, we have to, we have to know that we are victorious. Um, funny, funny story. And I guess it happened today for a reason. So, um, because the weather is changing here in, in the Chicagoland area, other changes, at least in my house, we get all kinds of creepy, crawly creatures in the house. And for some reason I get silverfish, right? You know, those little silverfish bugs. <laughs> 
and they fall in my into my bathtub. And so when they fall into my bathtub, because the, the, the sides of the tub are so slick, they fall in and they can't get out. So normally, because I, you know, how can I be so afraid of such a little thing, right? You know, it's almost like, you know, you get the wheelies, the willies or whatever <laughs> when you see them. So normally what I would do would be um, turn the shower on and just wash the thing down the sink, right? But today, Holy Spirit was like, stop being afraid of something that can't hurt you. Mm. Go get. And it's funny, too. Oh, Lord, I didn't even think about it until now. I keep these um, cards with scriptures on them. And mm -hmm. I post uh, I, sometimes I change them around, but I keep the pile in my bathroom on the side of the sink. And I post them on my mirror. So I, I speak scriptures over myself in the morning. So whenever, I, you know, I'm in the bathroom, whatever. And he said, get one of your scripture cards and take it and remove it and, and, and send and put it in the window. <laughs> and I did not think about it until just now. Wow. Holy spirit. What he's saying through that parable, if you will, is, when something comes in like that, like those snakes, those demons, those those dreams, those weird things that happen in your house, those no noises that go bump in the night, instead of being afraid of the supernatural, because it is supernatural, it's 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 disarming. If we be truthful about it, it's it's strange, right? But don't be afraid of those things because you take the word. And you just usher it right out your house. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to usher it right outside your house because we don't have, we in and of ourselves don't have the ability to destroy it. Only God can. Only God can destroy that enemy. Only God can take that enemy and lock it up in the abyss, right? Until such time that he releases it again. Only he can do that. But we, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can say, get up and get out of my house. Get up and get out of my dreams. Get up and get out of my spirit, man. Get up and get out of my kids. Get up and get out. So by the word of God, we have the authority by the spirit of God, as you said in Luke chapter 10. We have the ability to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And through my studies, I've learned that serpents and scorpions are uh, classifications and rankings of demons and, and, and um, demonic powers to God be the glory. So we have the ability to tread upon those things. Isn't there a song that says he's under my feet? He's mm -hmm. under my feet. So we have to we have to remember instead of being afraid of the thing that's in the tub <laughs> that can't hurt me, just pick it up with the word and send it on its way. Amen. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you that through your Holy Spirit, through your sacrifice, Jesus Christ, on the cross, thank you that you made an open show of the enemy and that he is a defeated foe, Lord. His time is running out and he's ramping up his attacks. But we thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, God. We thank you that the gates of hell shall not prevail against us or your church. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you that you have taught us how to war, that you fight our battles on our behalf, you are our shield and you are our buckler. And we thank you, O oh Lord. A thousand might fall at one side and 10,000 might fall on another side, but it shall not come near us, O oh God. The pestilence that comes by night, the 
arrows that fly by day, it shall not come near us. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we have the ability to bind up those things of the enemy, to bind up, oh God, his weapons in the name of Jesus. And we can loose your angels to war on our behalf. We thank you, oh Lord. Father, we come against those snakes and those rats in the dreams right now in the name of Jesus. We come against witchcraft and all manner of occultism that is attacking your people right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we have the victory through you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers all in the name of Jesus. We love you and we appreciate you, God, that you are for us and not against us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah and amen and amen. Anything to add, Jackie? No. Okay. All right. Here's one. You ready for this one? <laughs> My husband is cheating on me, but repeatedly asks for forgiveness. And there was silence in heaven for 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Woo. <clears throat> How do we, what, well, I've never been married and I can, I can only say from the outside looking in, if it were me, Lord help me. I've been gone, but that's just me. What yeah. say you? What say you? Well, I mean, there are a couple of variables to look at. Um, is he truly repentant? You know, you keep doing it and then you you say you're sorry, you know, are you really? Um, and, and so this person has to uh, make a decision as to how long, uh, how much are they going to continue to put up with? Uh, you know, right. are they willing to uh, continue in this and, and deal with this? Or is there something else, you know, that... Uh, they may consider. And so um, they definitely, definitely need strength um, to deal with this. Uh, definitely going to need God's healing, but you know, you stand in a situation where you're going to, you constantly putting yourself to be hurt. And again, yeah. what do you, you know, yeah. are you going to, what are you going to do with this? You know? So right. That, right. that's a, that's a tough one, you know? Um, yeah. It is. It's and and Lord forgive me because I I get like I said I've never been married but I I've had friends I've had sister um, sisters I've had um, daughters in the ministry several women in my life who've um, been cheated cheated on and I see how broken they are by the um covenant being broken mm -hmm. and it makes me biased towards the woman and very rarely do i have compassion or empathy for the man who cheats and you just said something that made me think there are different variables what's going on with him what's going on in his heart what's going on in his mind that he can't stop what, you know, um, and all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure that there are so many women that have cheated on their husbands. But whenever I think of a cheater, I always think of a man. I never think of a woman, Lord, mm -hmm. forgive me, you know? So um, there are different, what's going on in the heart that causes someone and lord thank you for correcting me what causes the heart to cheat what mm -hmm. causes you to say i can't stop doing this so there has to be compassion there has to be um 
uh, uh, empathy and um, Lord, again, help me. This is helping me to pray about for me to not be judgmental mm -hmm. about it because some people legitimately have a problem with being faithful. They just can't seem to put a handle on that. So, um, man. And, and, you know, and, and again, and, you know, definitely that is a spirit behind it, you know. Um, and I've been married before. Um, okay. And, you know, and by no means, uh, you know, am I telling anyone to leave their spouse? It just, it got to the point where it was too much for me to handle. Mm -hmm. And I was tired of the cheating year after year after year. Mm -hmm. And I made a conscious decision that enough was enough. And so that's what I did. And I never looked back. And, I, okay. you know, because it was too much. It was painful. And mm -hmm. then raising kids in that type of situation was hard as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I did what I thought what was best for me and my children at that particular time. Um, so, you know, again, you have to decide on what is best for you how much yeah. you can tolerate. Uh, I, I only tolerated for maybe nine years. I had a friend who tolerated for many, many, many years. And so, okay. you know, it depends on that individual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I think, uh, I think, I'm thinking about um, the prophet Hosea. Mm. Who God told him to marry a mm -hmm. loose woman, if mm -hmm. you will, and um, basically told him, "You, I want you to marry this woman." No, going into the marriage, knowing that she was going to eventually cheat on him, because God told him that's what she was going to do. Yeah. And then she did, and she left him, and she was around with many different men. And then God told Hosea, "Go back and get her." Mm -hmm. and restore her mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if I'm a woman built for that right you know God knew who he was choosing when he chose Hosea because Hosea could have been like Jonah I ain't doing that and ran you know but he was obedient to God and I wonder how many of uh, of us meaning in the body of Christ, because the divorce rate is actually higher in the church right now than it is in the world. Mm. Um, how many of us have missed it, missed it, if you will, because we could not heed the voice of the Lord that said, restore the marriage. Mm. Once there was cheating involved, once the, once there, I should should say and cheating comes in so many it, not so many different forms but cheating comes can come in a physical form or even an emotional bond with someone else um which i've seen to be just as devastating as if a physical act had taken place mm -hmm. um but how many of us have missed it and i lump all of us in together because we're all supposed to stand as one but how many of us have missed it because we just, our flesh was like, no, I'm not taking him back. No, I'm not taking her back. That's something hmm. to think about. Blessings, yes, Dr. Battle. How are you, Dr. Battle? Um, so, um, and how... If you don't mind, I know this kind of personal, but how did it affect your kids, Jackie? Um, my son, the oldest, mm -hmm. was very, very, very angry. He was nine years old. Mm. I mean, just really very angry. And to this day, he still has resentment. And he's about 30, mm. 30 something now. Um, my daughter, um, so he was angry and he expressed his anger outwardly. Um mm. 
behavior wise at school. I was always at the school. And he was always doing something, always getting in trouble. My daughter kind of did hers on a little different angle where she would, um, if she had a male teacher, I mm -hmm. knew it was going to be a rough year. Mm -hmm. I just like to get it. And so when she had a male teacher, she was, you know, she would do things. As long as she had a female teacher, she was okay. Um, and so her her behavior wasn't as bad as my son, mm -hmm. but they both kind of acted out in their own way differently. Again, my mm. son, very, 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 very angry. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, again, male teachers were, was her issue. Okay. She just couldn't stand to have a, a male teacher, period. She just would act up. Um, and and so yeah, they they really, they really they they took it really hard, both mm -hmm. of them. Uh, mm -hmm. My daughter, again, was a little little. She handled hers a little better than my son did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how are their relationships with others today? If you don't oh, mind my, me asking. Oh, it's oh god, my son. They're right now. It's just on both ends. It's horrible. Let me just put it like this. It's mm -hmm. horrible. Uh, relationship wise, they just cannot seem to have good relationship uh with the opposite sex mm. Mm -hmm. yeah so so it became almost like a generational curse kind of thing absolutely in fact my daughter said something the other day with the relationship that i guess has ended she, she said you know i always tried to get a daddy figure and every time i try to get someone to be a daddy figure i guess it just failed her god daddy mm. wasn't there so so she deals with that when it comes to men. And I think, you know, just looking at her going from, uh, and not that she go from, you know, just like multiple relationships, but mm -hmm. she, mm -hmm. she gets in one and before she can get healed to mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. she has gravitated and, and pulled somebody else in to kind of fill that void. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. So it, uh, you know, infidelity doesn't affect just the husband and the wife it affects the family structure period which is absolutely under, which is under attack from the enemy and i really believe that he attacks the family so hard because it is a reflection of the covenant that we have with jesus yeah and the father you know um so as we pray do you mind praying for this jackie no not at all not at all okay if as you pray, can we just, uh, you know, touch on not only that husband and wife relationship, but the family relationship as well? Absolutely. Okay. So, Father, we thank you tonight, God, and we pray, Father, tonight, bringing this family up before you. God, we know that nothing is too hard. Nothing is too complicated for you. And so, Father, we're praying for this marriage, God that your will will be done, God. Yes, God, Lord. we're praying, Father, right now that healing will take place. God, let deliverance, God, take place in this situation, Father. You see what's going on, and Father, you see everything that's concerning the family. And so, Father, we bring them up before you on this on this time, oh God, and praying, oh God, that you would just intervene right now. God, you have declared in your word that the two become one. And God, we know that the enemy comes God. He comes to divide. He comes to separate. And Father, we're coming tonight, God. We're coming with the word, God, and we're standing on your word, and we're decreeing and we're declaring tonight, oh God, God, that by your stripes, God, that this marriage will be healed, Father, yes, in the God. name of Jesus. God, we're decreeing and we're declaring right now, God, that the blood of Jesus, God, God, will be applied to this situation, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, and God. Father, if there are any children God, that are involved, God. We're praying for their little hearts. We're praying for them, oh God, right now yes, in God. the name of Jesus. God, you're able to touch, oh God. And Father, so we're praying and we cancel out the, the enemy plan, God, to continue, God, to have families broken. We cancel yes. it out right now. And so, Father, we're coming against generational curses, Father, yes, right Father. now in the name of Jesus. And God, we speak right now, wholesome, God, right now, oh God. And God, 
God, we are praying, oh God, God, if the children are involved, God, God, that you will touch them right now, and yes, God, that God. you would heal them, God. God, let them not grow up with anger, God, animosity yes. toward the parents, oh God. God, not knowing how to have a, a good relationship with others, oh God. God, walking around, God, with that hurt, and God, and that pain, and that brokenness, yes. God, God, causing them to act out, God. Even, God, if they, you know, grow up, God, God, causing them, oh God, to act out, and God, we see the hurt, and see the pain, and God, yes, all they know is hurt and damage, and so, Father, we're praying against that right now in the name yes, of Lord. Jesus, God, that they will be healed, God. We speak healing over their lives, Father, yes. right now in the name of Jesus, and oh, God, God, begin to work, God. God, touch the wife, God. Touch her yes. mind, God. God, comfort her in this, oh, God. God, yes, walk her through this, oh, God. God, give her the strength, oh, God. God, give her the peace, ah. God, give her the joy, God. God, I pray for a support system, oh, God. Yes. God, that she can have someone that she can go and talk to. God, every tear that drops, God, you catch it, oh, God. God, you be right there, Father, in the name of Jesus. The and then we Jesus. pray for the man, oh, God. God, whatever he's wrestling with, God, whatever he's gone through, God, that has caused him to be broken, that has caused yes. him to be damaged, God, we speak healing right now, right now in the name of Jesus. God, we know that you're able. And so, God, we're trusting you in this season, oh, God. God, begin to work and fix this thing, God. And we give your name all the praise and we give Hallelujah. your name all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Woo, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I felt that down in my shundo. <laughs> Halle. Woo, thank you, Lord. Uh, okay, next one. It's about 1037-ish. So um, next one. This is a true story. It just happened sometime today. I don't know the exact details, but this young lady is a member of the church I attend, and um, she posted it on Facebook, so it's not a secret. I'm not going to say her name uh, or her mother's name, but I am going to tell you the situation. So the situation is, and I completely forgot I did banners and all of this stuff for these, all of these, but that's never mind. Um, so um, to sometime today, someone, and it seems as if she knows who it is, uh, a person that she's been having ongoing problems with, they threw a Molotov cocktail mm -hmm. through her apartment window. <sighs> through her bedroom window to be specific um, while she was at work. Um, but her brother was at home and her grandson, I believe was at home. Um, so I guess her daughter, her grandson and her brother lived all lived together with her and it destroyed the apartment. And unfortunately it killed her brother. Hmm. So she lost everything. Thank God her daughter and her grandson were able to get out. She um, decided to go into work today. Otherwise, she would have been in her bedroom where she works from home part time. She does like hybrid, I guess. Mm. So she works in her bedroom. So she would have been in the room when whoever threw the firebomb through the window, it landed on her bed, mm. destroyed everything. Um, so uh, I can't imagine. Um, I don't know who this person is. Uh, I read through her, her posts um, because I couldn't believe what I was reading. And then my pastors reached out also to all of us and told us what was going on. But um well, they told us to pray for her, but um, I couldn't believe it. And she said something to the effect of you call yourself our family, my cousin, but you're the one that did this. So I, we don't, you know, really don't know. or I, I really don't know. And I don't want to speculate as to what happened. But it happened. Mm. I can't imagine somebody being so angry or so destructive 
or so murderous that they would throw an incendiary device into someone's home and it ended up killing him. It killed someone. So, um, of course, she's distraught. Her mother uh, is distraught. Um, I'm I'm hurt and, and upset for them, you know. She has to start over. And uh, she needs our prayers and our support. Amen. Um, so I don't know, you know, I don't know what type of fundraising, you know, I don't know if she had insurance and all of that stuff, but right now everything is so fresh, but we need to pray her strength. We need to, you know, I just feel the compassion of the Lord falling on, you know, on me for her. It, it, I can, you know, just talking about it is making me feel heavy. I, and I can feel her anger. I can feel it, you know. And as much as we try, um, blessings to you, Instagram. Um, as much as we try to be those good Christians, um, we get angry. Mm -hmm. We get frustrated. We get disappointed we get frustrated we get perplexed we get a we we become afraid you know all of those emotions i don't believe that god would um penalize us for having emotions he said just you know he didn't say don't get angry he said don't sin in your anger mm -hmm. so I'm praying for her and I'm praying against the spirit of retribution mm -hmm. and vengeance because this thing could spiral out of control real quick. And I thank God her mama is a praying mama. And this young lady, she knows the Lord as well. And it struck me when she showed some videos of the apartment since it's been destroyed. And one of the things that was sitting next to her bed was a book about Jesus. Mm. And that book looked untouched. <laughs> and I said, thank you, Jesus. You're speaking to her. Even if she don't see it, I see it. Your testimony is there and she'll see it because She's been brought up in the word. She knows the word and she gonna, she's going to fall back on that word. She's going to run to the word. She's going to run to him. He is her strong tower. You are her strong tower, God. So I just want to pray for her, 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 her daughter, her grandson, um, her mother and the loss of her son. My God. I, I, I can't even imagine. And it's so much tragedy going on. It's so easy to say, oh, that's such a shame and not feel anything. Mm -hmm. You know, especially with like we watch the news. If you watch the news, a lot of people have stopped watching the news because they don't just don't want to know anymore. We kind of like checked out emotionally like we don't have any empathy or compassion anymore because we're just overloaded with everything. But I just feel the weight of this family right now. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to pray. And if you, if the Lord gives you anything to pray after me, I'm going to go ahead and pray as well. Um, let you pray as well. Um, Father God, I thank you for this family right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for your restoration power. You said in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, I will restore health unto you, your will, your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. You are the one that will restore God. You will restore the joy of their salvation. You will uphold them with your mighty right hand, Father. And I thank you right now that you 
will restore them, Father. And instead of their shame, Lord, I'm asking that you give them a double portion in the name of Jesus for everything that this young lady lost, for everything that her daughter and grandson lost. I'm asking that you restore their possessions twofold in the name of Jesus, Lord. I ask that everything that they have given unto you in tithes and offering be returned unto them in a blessing, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, for you have laid laid up a plan for them, oh God. You have laid up storage for them, God, in the name of Jesus. So I'm asking that you release it now according to your riches and glory, according to your riches and glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking for favor in the situation with the police and with the fire department in the name of Jesus. I'm asking, Father, that all those that are involved be brought to your justice, Father, in the name of Jesus. I decree that there shall be no cold case. I decree and declare that there shall not be delay in the justice system, in the court system, in the police uh, action, in the name of Jesus, that all those that are responsible will be held accountable according to your word. What was done in darkness, God, let it be brought out to the light, God. Let those that have been hiding, oh God, be brought out, Father, and, and released to those that you will send the, uh, in, into into police custody in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray strength right now and healing over her mother and over her and the entire family and the loss of their loved one, God. No one deserves to die by another man's hand, God. No one desires desire, no one desires to see their family member hurt in such a way, God. But I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you will cover their minds according to your will and to your way. Way, Father, that you will cover their minds, Father, and do not allow them to go into despair. In the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of bereavement and ungodly sorrow, Father. In the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of anger and strife. In the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of revenge and hatred. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm asking that you will breathe on them right now, oh God, the breath of life, that you will breathe, oh God, love into their spirit and into their souls right now and that they will have a peace that surpasses all understanding right now in the name of Jesus. Cover them, Father, by your mighty right hand. I'm asking that you will hide them under your anointing, God. And when they are weary and when they are tired and when they are frustrated, let them run to the rock, God. Let them run to your covering. Let them run to the strong tower in the name of Jesus. Do not allow them to fail, oh God. Do not allow them to fall. Do not allow them to stumble. Do not allow the enemy to set up a stumbling block. Do not allow them, Father, to be tricked into doing or saying something that will be blasphemous against you, your spirit, oh God. But let them be an example, oh God. Let them be an example unto your love. Let them be an example unto your kingdom, oh God. And even in this, what the enemy meant for evil, what the enemy meant for bad, Lord, I'm asking that you turn it around and bring it for good, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, cover them. Cover every expense that they have in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, cover funeral expenses. Cover um, uh, car expenses. Cover insurance expenses. Cover clothing expenses. Clothing, uh, um, eating expenses. Anything that they need, God, I'm asking that you supply it right now in the name of Jesus. Do it for your glory and none others in the name of Jesus. Let your light so shine, Father, that all all men will know and see that you are God. Let this be for a purpose, Father, and not let it be in vain. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. You have anything you want to add? Oh, Elder, I think you've covered it. No, you, you covered it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I think we got time for one more. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see. Ooh, my older sister is a narcissist and constantly lies on me to make me look 
like I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. <laughs> Ooh. It's that lion spirit. The narcissist spirit. Have you ever had to deal with a narcissist spirit? Yes. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that person is always <clears throat> thinking about themselves. Everything is about them, centered around them. Um, yeah, yeah, they have no... Uh, uh, empathy for others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They make it all about them. Mm -hmm. I, I I see a lot. Uh, a lot of people call it um, the narcissist um, syndrome. Uh, uh, some people call it the Jezebel spirit. Mm. Um. And I always say to people, which Jezebel, the New Testament Jezebel or the Old Testament <laughs> Jezebel? <laughs> um, but constantly have to be in control. Um, will catfish you. Mm -hmm. Will tell you um, all kinds of things to suck you into their orbit. And then will tell you other stuff to keep you in that orbit and when you try to pull away the force of their gravity will pull you back in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and will make you feel like you're crazy like they'll tell you something they'll say something to you and then when you come back and say but you said i never said that mm -hmm. you know and make you doubt yourself brings a lot of self-doubt brings a lot of self-condemnation upon yourself because you really think well did i say it or did they say it or just like crazy stuff mm -hmm. um it's a difficult situation and especially when it's a close relative like a sister or a mother um or a father you know, it really makes it difficult. Or a leader. Or, ooh. <laughs> now, you had to go there, didn't you? Yeah, because that's where I've seen that spirit a lot. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even thinking you're crazy, you know, we use a term called gaslighting where you, you know, you know, it's like, wait a minute. I know this is what you did. I know this is what you said. So again, it's to kind of make you feel again like you're crazy. So they use yeah. that often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, what I've seen with leadership, if you know, if you don't uh, give in to them, uh, you know, don't um, make it about them, then you pay a, a, a dear price. Mm you're going to pay a price because it's all about them. And, and again, it's, it's self-absorbed, you know, look at me. Yeah. I'm your little G-O-D, you know, to some degree. Ooh, girl, I was trying so hard not to go I'm sorry. there. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You, don't be sorry. That's what we're here to talk of. Real life, real prayers, real life. And, and, and a lot of people are dealing with this in churches and you know churches businesses mm -hmm. you know leadership just does not only apply to the church even though you know we're talking about church things or uh, if you mean meaning not a building or particular denomination or specific church but the church there's a lot of that going on and people don't know how to talk about it and mm -hmm. we've been told in a lot of cases by the narcissists and their supporters you don't talk about leadership like that you don't put your mouth on the man of god or the woman of god like that you let god deal with them but what if god is not dealing with them <laughs> how do you deal with it and, and i don't think it's so much as that you're you know, sometimes you know, well, I guess sometimes people do say things to tear down leadership, but something sometimes you you see that spirit, you recognize what's going on, and you know you not so much. 
I wouldn't say address it with them, but of course address it in a, a setting where you can pray about it, you know, mm -hmm. not a setting where you just talking about them, but you see this and you bring it, you know, to God and, and pray about it because, of, you know, I, I think sometimes, you know, we get so into the church where we forget or we get so caught up that we don't recognize that we have some things in us that need to be dealt with, mm -hmm. you know, and especially leaders, leaders are not above or they're not exempt from having different personality traits or mm -hmm. different things that don't line up with God mm -hmm. that needs to be dealt with. It is mm -hmm. what it is. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, I thought about Luke 17, Luke chapter 17, verse um, three. And we skip over this part. We 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 skip over this part because we talk about it. And I think we just talked about it with the um, with the cheating thing. Um, verse four says, if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version. Mm -hmm. But the, the third verse says, be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him and if he repents forgive him and uh the other thing that kind of popped in my head was um confess your faults one to another mm -hmm. why do we think that once because just and, and I can say this both for family and for leadership. Just because you're a family member or just because you're a leader, fivefold, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher. Just because you're my mother, my father, just because you're my pastor, my apostle does not mean that you cannot fail or you cannot mess up. Mm hmm that you cannot, that you're exempt from sinning because you have a position of authority over me. We're all falling short of the glory of God. All of us have, you know, all of us were shaped, shaped and formed in iniquity, right? We didn't necessarily pick what iniquity we were shaped in, right? Like we know Jeffrey Dahmer was born with a murderous spirit. It's, we just it, John Wayne Gacy was born with a murderous spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Certain people like you don't have to teach a kid how to lie. It comes quote unquote naturally. You don't have to teach a like my granddaughter is becoming a little master manipulator. Ain't nobody Ooh. had to teach her that, <laughs> you know. She's funny, but you know, but at the same time, we can't allow that behavior to keep going. It has to be tempered with the word of God, even at three years old. So people fall short. And like you said, people have different personalities. And if someone sins against me, I should rebuke them. And that flies in the face of judge not lest you be judged. No judgment and judgment are two different things right so if someone sins against me i should rebuke them in love right like why would you do that you shouldn't do that to me mm -hmm. versus you going to hell because you did such as you're a terrible rotten person and god's not gonna forgive you and neither am i you know it's a difference brother why would you do that to me sister why would you say that to me and if they repent, then we forgive them, right? Mm -hmm. And if they keep doing it, we're supposed to say, I forgive you, even though it's, you know, but that but it's conditional. There's that condition. If they if they repent, if they repent, if they repent, if they say forgive me, it's conditional. But when a person doesn't see that they're doing something to hurt you consistently and constantly how do you handle that for me it is staying in a posture of humility and prayer and a lot of people probably you know i i've dealt with some stuff in the last few years 
And I've had some people come to me and say, girl, if I were you, I would have cussed them out and been gone a long time ago. And for me, it was swallow my pride, humble myself. My former pastor, who happens to be my uncle, says this all the time. You cannot humiliate someone who has humbled themselves first. Mm. So I would humble myself and make myself of no report so that God would get the glory. And um, I don't know if it was because I've dealt with people that have that type of personality. And I part of I'll say it like this. Part of it was because I've been conditioned my whole life not to fight back. But the other part of it was submitting to the will of God and saying, humility first, humility first, humility first, humble myself. Jesus didn't strike back when they pulled, when they plucked his beard from his chin, he didn't strike back. When they pressed them thorns in his head, they, he did not strike back. When they called him out his name, he did not cuss them out. So part of it is trying to be like him. And honestly, and I'll be honest and tr very transparent, it's very, 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 very hard. Very, very hard on your flesh to swallow your pride. Mm. It's so hard. But when you come out on the other side of it, you can come out saying, listen, my hands are clean and my conscience is pure because I didn't say anything and I didn't do anything. I let the Lord handle it. But it's that process of getting from the, okay, I got to humble myself to the, my hands are clean, that process, that, that's the hard part. So for that young lady who says my, you know, my sister is a narcissist and she keeps lying on me. The only thing I can tell, tell you is to stay prayerful, to try to stay in the humility of the Lord, know your worth in the Lord. Don't let your worth be determined by somebody else, but let your worth be determined by the Lord himself. You are seated in heavenly places with him. You are uh, the righteousness of Christ. He loves you. And if nobody else does, that's all that should matter. And I know that's hard to say. You know, it's easy to say it's hard to feel or know. But when you're dealing with um, a person that constantly lies and cheats and, and talks about you and makes puffs themselves up, it it they're destined to fall and you have to pray for them that the lord will shake them out of that because only the lord can only the lord can make them see themselves especially if they're far gone like that if they're full-blown narcissists Really, only either therapy, and they say nine times out of ten, therapy for a narcissist doesn't work because they think they're smarter than the than the therapist. But you have to trust God that the truth will come out. And even if it doesn't come out here, it is gonna come out before his throne. Period. It's gonna come out. Whether it's on this side of eternity, on the other side, it's going to come out. So you have to li literally play the long game when it comes to narcissists and people like that. In my opinion, in my in my experience. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying I agree. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you and we honor you and we bless you, God, because 
This young lady, she was fearfully and wonderfully made by you, God. And there is not one person on this earth that can change that, including her sister, God. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will buffer her, that you will hold her, God. You are the many breasted one. So I'm asking that you hold her close to your heart right now, that she can hear your heart beat towards her father, that you will show her a love that has, that she has never experienced before in her life. God, touch her even where she is right now. Envelop her spirit man with your spirit of love. Touch her mind, God, and allow her to see her sister, Father, as you see her, God. Allow her not to have a spirit of retribution or retaliation, but let her have compassion and love for her sister, God. Help her to understand that her sister is lost, God, but she can be found by you, Father. If you can touch Saul's heart, and turn him from a murderer, you can change her sister, God. If you could change me, Father, you can change anybody. So I'm thanking you, you in advance, oh God, for touching her sister's heart, God. Turn her sister's heart from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh that she might receive your love in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking that you repair their relationship according to your word, oh God. Let them walk closely as sisters. Let there be restoration and healing according to your word, God, in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you, God, that you are a healer. You are a healer, Father. And I thank you, oh God, that every um, in, infraction, every hurt, every pain that has been inflicted, God, that her sister will not only forgive, but she will forget, God, that she will blot it out the transgressions, even as you blot out our transgressions in the name of Jesus. And I know, oh Lord, that she can only do that by your spirit. So I'm asking you that you fill a, her up with your spirit, oh God, so that she can walk not according to her flesh, but according to your spirit. I bless you and I thank you, oh God. And all of our prayers on tonight, we ask, oh God, that you cover them with the blood of Jesus. We decree and declare that there shall be no backlash or retaliation against me or Jackie, our households, our children, our possessions, our property in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you cover us both day and night you never sleep and you never slumber. I thank you, oh God, for your angels that you have sent to protect us, to minister unto us, to guide us and to keep us in all of your ways, oh God. Bless our mouths, bless our ears, bless, oh God, our hands, oh God. You said that you have given us power to obtain wealth. So I'm asking, Father, that you stir up, oh God, the ability to bring wealth into our homes in the name of Jesus. Whatever we lack, oh God, I thank you in advance for you providing it according to your riches and glory. I thank you, oh God, that you love us and there's nothing we can do about it. We thank you and we honor you for this Wednesday watch. And we ask, oh God, that you will bless and keep each and every person, oh God, that has watched here on Facebook and on Instagram in the name of Jesus. We love you, we honor you, and we bless you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in for those of you that tuned in live and for those of you that will be watching the replay on youtube on tomorrow thank you for being a part of our wednesday watch our inaugural um broadcast of wednesday watch blessings to you erica to god be the glory so um jackie intercessor jackie thank you thank you thank you for being a part of the very first wednesday watch being streamed i appreciate you so very much thank you and i love you so very much love you too and um, we will see you all next week, Wednesday at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time here on Facebook, here on my personal page, on the Global Girl page, on the What's This Prayer Stuff page, Instagram, and on YouTube. Love you. Good night.